Notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council for, form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions, and comments shall be limited to the issues and cannot involve individuals or staff-related matters. All cell phones and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call this meeting of the Terramont Parish Council to order, and we will have the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Steve Trostler. Please rise. Heavenly Father, we come to you this hour asking for your guidance and blessing as we are gathered here to address matters at hand. We ask that you clearly show us how to conduct our work. Help us to work together and encourage us to challenge each other to reach higher and farther to be the best that we can be, keeping the good of Terrible and Parish in mind. We ask this in the name of Jesus, Lord, of the, we ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Can we please get a roll call? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Pleasure, Mr. Harding, Mr. Michelle, Mr. Amity, Mr. Mrs. Domain, Mr. Darren Gidry, Mr. Babin, Mr. Dirt Gidry, Mr. Trust Claire. Madam Chairwoman, you have a quorum present. Thank you. And I do have uh, one letter regarding an absence tonight. Please accept my apologies for not being in attendance to tonight's council meeting due to a personal matter. As usual, I will keep myself informed of matters on the agenda and ne items needing my attention for District 3 and for Terrible Parish. Thank you for understanding. Best regards, Mr. Gerald Michel. Approve the minutes of the regular council session held on September 13th, 2023. Moved by Mr. Dirk Gidry, second by Mr. Darren Gidry. Um, members, vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion passes. Um, distribute the minutes of the regular council session held on September 27, 2023. Approve accounts payable bill list for September 18, 2023 to September 25, 2023. Moved by Mr. Darren Gidry. Second. second by Mr. John Amity. Members, vote your machines. <clears throat> we have seven yeas. Motion passes. Approve accounts payable list for October 2nd, 2023 to October 9th, 2023. Move. Moved by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Second, Second by Mr. Darren Gidry. Members vote your machines. We have seven yeas. Motion passes. Approve manual checklist for August 2023. Move. Moved by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Second by Mr. Darren Gidry. Members vote your machines. We have seven yeas. Motion passes. Item one, general business. A proclamation proclaiming October 2023 as a Chafalaya National Heritage Month. Mr. Darren Gidry. Hello. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the proclamation says, whereas the Atchafalaya National Heritage Area created by public law number 109-338 subsection B is one of 49 nationally distinctive heritage areas designated by the United States Congress. And whereas the Atchafalaya National Heritage Area contains the Atchafalaya Basin, the largest river swamp in America, and is promoted as America's f foreign country. And whereas the Atchafalaya National Heritage Heritage Area encompasses 14 parishes, including Terrebonne Parish, reflecting the unique culture and history evolving from life in and around the Atchafalaya Basin, Basin, making it therefore one of the most unique heritage areas in the United States. And whereas the Atchafalaya Basin is considered the most productive swamp in the world and contributes substantially to the, econo the economy of Louisiana, and whereas the Atchafalaya Basin and the parishes within the heritage area house important wetlands that serve as buffers during storm surges. And whereas the Atchafalaya National Heritage Area offers exceptional opportunities for education, recreation, and tourism, so important to the economies of the state and to the heritage area parishes, for which information on all of these opportunities can be found at http 
www.achafalaya.org. And whereas the Office of Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism, and the Commissioner of the Atchafalaya National Heritage Area encourage and promote recreational, educational, and visitor activities during the month of October to raise awareness of the valuable resources, unique culture, and recreational opportunities located within the heritage area. And whereas Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser has duly proclaimed October 2023 as Atchafalaya Month in the state of Louisiana, now therefore, the Terrebonne Parish Council, on behalf of the Terrebonne Parish government, hereby joins the Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser and the Atchafalaya Trace Commission in designating the month of April 2023 as Atchafalaya National Heritage Area Month to encourage the citizens of Terrebonne Parish to take time during the month to visit points of interest in the Atchafalaya National Heritage Area and its basin and to become more familiar with this truly natural treasure and it's presented this 11th day of October 2023 signed by parish president Gordon Dove and on behalf of the parish council council chairwoman Jessica Domingue do we have somebody to accept this We'd just like to thank you guys uh, for all of your support and helping us promote and preserve the unique Louisiana um, culture we have in the Atchafalaya Basin and Floodway through your promotion of the natural resources like Bayou Terrebonne and the preservation of the French language. So we look forward to working with you and the rest of the heritage area in the future. Thank you. Item B, informational presentation by Mr. Carl Dedivo regarding the Military Museum. Mr. Dedivo, if you can come up to the mic, please. Does everybody have a book? Yes, sir. And I didn't miss anybody. Okay, great. The book that I put together is kind of to give people some information about exactly what's going on. Uh, all of the council members, Mr. Dove, I know you've visited. Have you all, all been to the museum, the military museum? If you haven't, well, you need to do it. Anyway, first thing I'd like to thank the volunteers for their support to make our museum one of the best visits in Homa. I put this book together to inform you about our struggles with some volunteers who joined this museum for the wrong reasons. This year, we made an attempt to apply for state funds to help complete the museum. <laughs> that some of those on the Military Veterans Board rejected it and said they would do it later. Some volunteers who are not in agreement with the objectives of the museum continue to disrupt and dismantle the hardworking efforts of other volunteers. These are those dark side volunteers who want to run a reckless course against those of us who went to Baton Rouge to change the law and the foundation will receive $500,000 to help grow this museum. I ask you to read the last page and last paragraph of tab seven. We had a a group of people and we were trying to actually find out how we could get enough money to finish the museum about what it stands for. Now the same group of people are saying how we did it wrong. I don't know how wrong it is, especially when the state's gonna give you $500,000. Senator Fessy wanted to get the museum $1 million to finish the museum. Thank you, Senator Fessy and your senators and your legislators for their support. By the way, in the Senate, we got 31 yay votes with zero nays and two absents. 
in the legislative house. We got a um, matter of a unanimous 99, four, zero nays and six ab absence. We will continue to fight to make the, this museum better than it was yesterday. This book should help you understand how and why we will push forward to get rid of, of some of these same people. You can help make this museum an educational jewel for Terrebonne Parish and why we fly the American flag. Please remember your job is to work for the betterment of Terrebonne Parish. Thank you for your time. This museum is an asset to Terrebonne Parish and should be treated as such for Homa and the surrounding <coughs> areas. And I do want to thank you all for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much. Try to read the book. You will understand where we're coming from. Mr. Davo. Would you want to yes, sir. turn on your... Um, it's on. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Okay. Excuse us. We have a new system, and there's little gremlins okay. in there that we're yeah. we've been working out for a couple my, of my months. My life is a new system. So they yeah. they pop really up, nice. and and to all the members that are here with you, I know this is um, you guys have been struggling with this issue for some time, um, and we've gotten requests from various people to see what we as a council can do. Um, I mean, really, what the council does on this is basically um, ratify the the members of the different boards, and then we also have the authority um, to remove a board member if we had to. But if I can make a suggestion to you, and I, I'm pretty sure one of my colleagues had made this as well, if the two groups could find a uh, common mediator to say that can work between you guys um, and it, it might be a little bit of work to get it done but uh, I think that that would would probably help um, I know that you guys have been going back and forth on a different meetings and sometimes that can get kind of uh, testy a little animated and stuff but what we do whenever we have something, we find a mediator, somebody, a neutral person in between us that uh, that can come and, and hear and help you guys navigate through the situation because we all want to see, you know, this whole deal be successful. And we understand the dynamics of both of the boards and what one's responsibility is and what the other. And the museum, I mean, we want to see that thing successful we want to see it finalized we want to make sure that we can use it to draw in tours um i mean it it's a it's a gem for the community and we want to make sure that that it uh it's not wrapped in turmoil you know so i guess what i'm saying is we're kind of limited in what we can do as a council um but uh i think if the two different boards found some neutral person in the community that they both respect and would allow as a mediator, um, I think that would be a big step in resolving uh, some of the issues. Um, so again, that's just my thoughts, a thought that I have, a thought that I've spoken with other colleagues about <clears throat> in trying to decide exactly what we as a council could do, looking back into the creation of it how it operates and things like that. So uh, that's my two cents to all you guys that are here in, in support of the museum. I support the museum and uh, thank you for uh, coming and sharing. I'm going to get into this book some more. Please read um, the book and um, see exactly what you think about it. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't, I didn't put this together for nothing because <laughs> it's a good work. I mean, I'm, I'm a detail nerd. So I love this stuff. When Good. people come and they Good. present things like Good. this, that gives me what I need, you know, and because we don't always know where to research. So I started researching from the how the, the boards were created and how they operate and that sort of thing to see exactly what authority we had a council as a council had to deal with it. 
but uh, I mean, we got to start somewhere, um, and I think that would be a good start. Well, I hope Just you find the person that can come up and make it happen. That's all I'm telling you. Because yes, I've sir. tried a lot of times to do different things. Yeah, I mean, it's always wrong, and it's we, all about well, I that think, objective. You know, I think that's something we'll talk among each other and see if uh, we can re recommend a person that would be interested in going in that uh, both sides would be willing to work with. I've given about $200,000 for this program mm -hmm. in my pocket, maybe more than that. Okay, I'm very uh, I'd, adamant I'd, about this. Yeah. And I promise you, like I'm standing here tonight, I will not stop until the flag flies over that museum and we don't have all those havoc faces. Right. No, I, I understand I understand the emotions, and Mr. Daddyville, thank you again for coming before us. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Daddyville, I have one more light, sir. Sure. Um, Mr. Babin. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Babin, can you turn it on? Our system is about actually yeah, it's, weird. it's putting it on immediately, okay. Yeah, it is. Thank you very much. Carl, thank you. Uh, and, and to everyone here from the museum board, the veterans board, you know I've spoken to both sides before. I agree with everything that John just said. I wish we could find somebody that would be a neutral party to come in. The, the latest, because I was asked tonight, and I spoke to Candace right before, as you all know, there was a cooperative endeavor agreement that was supposedly being written, and uh, Michelle Neal, the attorney, uh, I'm assuming for the, 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 the parish. But let's let Candace give the, the details on the attorneys, please. Yes, sir. So Michelle Neal is acting as an independent source. Okay. So she's supposed to be the neutral. She's an assistant parish attorney for the parish. So we've asked her to help us with the agreement between the Veterans Memorial District Board and the Regional Military Museum Foundation. And the foundation has an attorney, too. And Michelle and her have been in communication. Um, I haven't gotten an update today, but um, they have been in communication. Okay. I just I, I want to make sure that we, we all heard that at the same time. Candace and I spoke before the meeting, and again, like she just said, Michelle is the arbitrator, if you will, and hopefully in this particular situation. And if she and the attorney for the museum are speaking, that, that's maybe we don't always like to get in, uh, attorneys involved, but in a cooperative endeavor agreement, we need well, someone. We need someone who can be objective both ways, and hopefully we can get one good document out of this. So. Know that it, it is we're, in. We're movement. ready for the document, but don't make it one-sided. I, I, I'm not. I'm not going to fool with you. the I, document. I understand okay. what you're asking. Yeah. All and right. you know, it is what it is, and we're going to straighten it up. I well, promise you. Well, let's hope so, because we we have a jewel there, and we want to make sure it continues. Okay. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Mr. Daddyville, and I do have two speaker cards on this on this topic. Uh, Mr. Uh, Murdoch Gilmore. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. Um, Murdoch Gilmore, 208 Maple Avenue, Homa. Um, I'm a member of the Terrebonne Parish Memorial um, District Board. Been there for two years. Um, I'm a retired lieutenant colonel, um, and I have quite a few veterans that have approached me regarding issues. Um, and I've seen issues while being, while being on the board. Um, all we are asking for on the board is accountability and transparency, both of which we have, have not been able to or achieve. And um, we are looking forward to an arbit arbitration of this process um, because as the previous speaker had gone ahead and said, um, removing um, elements um, from the from the museum that weren't positive, um, I can tell you there are a lot of people that were forced out of the museum, that their soul hearts were in the museum. It's just due to the fact that they did not go ahead and follow the lead of Wilteria, um, and who basically 
has created a hostile work environment to the extent that they've had their full-time employee actually leave. Um, we have brought this before the board previously, um, and we wish to go ahead and have ensure that this is taken care of in the most efficient manner possibly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have one more uh, speaker card. Mr. Charles Nock. Coke. Sorry about that. Hi, Charles Cook, 201 Denning, Summerfield, Homa. Uh, I guess I'm one of those from the dark side, as previously mentioned. But nevertheless, uh, as Mr. Murdoch uh, brought out, that there's a lot of concern about how the museum is being operated and run and if it's meeting its mission and goal. And certainly it's a good thing that they've been able to obtain uh, monies to uh, help uh, finish off the second and third floor. But you see a lot of, and if you're close to it enough, you see a lot of the uh, inconsistencies that are going on there. For example, the um, uh, just, uh, excuse me, the parish attorney asked that there be a um, inventory uh, accomplished, and to date that has not been done. In fact, they've resisted giving an inventory, even to the point of saying, you know, we're a private institution, we don't need to give an inventory, uh, even though the parish attorney told us. Physical responsibility, um, one recent example, uh, we had a lathe that we was donated to the museum that we rebuilt for sale for to use those monies to build up the shop. Um, that lathe, they recently sold it for $500. It's an oil field lathe that was put back in operating condition. I know the people who bought it. I've showed them the pictures. I have a courtesy to sh show them what was done to it. The scrap value on it was over three times that. They sold it for $500. That lathe on the open market, if they'd followed the suggested ways of selling that thing was probably in the range of thirty to forty thousand um, dollars. So th there's concerns about the thought process, and even a recent uh, board member was uh, told that he associated with some of us, and he stinks. I would never say that, even to somebody who was in opposition. I would never say that to another board member. Um, and there's a list of at least six, I think. Violations that are not my opinion, not in a personal opinion. They are documented, and they've been shown to one of the um, uh, parish, uh, oh, excuse me, one of the uh, uh, councilmen up here. And if you uh, would ask him about those, he can show them to you if he likes to do so. A lot of concern about where the museum is going and what they're doing. They no longer participate in Mardi Gras parades, uh, outreach to schools, and so on has... Um, pretty much negligent, or excuse me, deficient, I should say. And so there's a lot of concerns about the way the original founder of the museum wanted this museum to uh, uh, be an interactive museum. And all the interactive venues that we used to work on there are now gone. And so there's a legitimate questions as to why um, or how the administration of the museum is conducting themselves. And I, I would hope that those uh, violations would be discussed among the councilmen uh, to get an idea of what's really going on there. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Item C, amend the con. I'm sorry, we have a light. Mr. Pledger, you can just. Thanks, speak, Madam sir. Chair. Um, I would just like to share that I've heard from Mr. Dedivo, Lieutenant Colonel, and also Mr. Nock, I think his name is Cook. And Cook, okay. And I'd like to share, as a military veteran, proud veteran, it's really, it's really hurtful to hear all that's going on. And all of you know, if you're a military veteran, the military teaches camaraderie. It teaches us how to deal with all sorts of issues, especially for this country. And to hear this, being the newest guy up here, it really hurts. And if I could do anything, whether you like it or not, I want to tell you what Uncle Sam taught us and showed us. Not taking sides for anybody, but at the same time, I think we all need to step back and take our personal feelings out of it and focus on the matter at hand, which is the military museum preserving history. That's the most important thing. 
Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Pledger. No other lights? Item C, amend the condemnation order adopted July 31st, 2023 on the residential structure located at 1128 Berg Street owned by Joe Harris Jr. by changing the deadline to demolish and or remove the structure from August 31st, 2023 to February 29th, 2024. Moved. Moved by Mr. Pledger, second by Mr. Gidry, Darren Gidry. Members, vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion passes. Item D, a resolution authorizing the parish president to execute the emergency management <clears throat> performance grant FY 2023 number EMT-2023-EP-0001 dash 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 S01 from the governor's office, Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, GOSEP, for operational expenses of the Terrebonne Parish Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness. So moved. moved by Mr. Dirk Gidry and a second by Mr. John Amity. Members, vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion passes. Do we want to go to 630 public hearing? Motion to go to 630 public hearing. We have a motion to go to 630 <laughs> public hearing by Mr. Dirk Gidry, second by Mr. Brian Pledger. Members, vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion passes. Item A, an ordinance to establish regulations and policies relative to the Rotary Centennial Plaza. Public once, public twice. I do have one speaker card on this, though, Mr. Tommy Grisco. Tommy, please uh, enter your uh, name and address okay. for the record. Sir. Thomas A. Garisco, uh, 309 Good Street, Homa, Louisiana. So I just want to start off by saying this uh, this plaza is going to be a game changer for, for Homa. Uh, we've already got people from out of, out of town wanting to come view it and see what we've done. So it's going to be a game changer for downtown. I want to congratulate the parish, all that they did. Chris had been working real good with us for uh, all this time. The engineers left today uh, for, a, a not, I don't know if they've got a substantial completion, but there were some things still to discuss. Uh, what I want to discuss it involves Melissa Boudreaux and, and Mahoney. She's in the back. Um, she put me up here, though. So anyway, um, we want to discuss probably just one item, but we're not sure that we want to delay anything. We just want to see if we bring something up uh, about the closing time of the street. Is that going to be something that's voted on tonight, Chris, or is that going to be... Uh, something that we have to go back to committee and delay everything. Uh, the issue is that uh, we, we were discussing in, in conference with them for months, and Chris has been uh, giving us all the information. We've been meeting about the plaza, and here it is. The plaza is on top of us. The only one thing that we saw so far, we just got the documents today. Uh, we just didn't, uh, we didn't discover what we thought uh, the closing time would be between 10 and 2, and it's come up to be 1 a.m., for the street to be shut down. Our concern is you, you're moving people out at one o'clock and then you're moving them out at 2 a.m. And why all the stress on that time? Uh, I would rather see it go to 2 a.m. and then come back and say that's not been good than to close at one, have the police come in and clean everybody out and then come back at two o'clock and do it all over again in the bars. So it's just uh, an inconvenience for, we think, for, the, for people downtown. Uh, to have to stop drinking on, on the plaza, uh, to go inside all the establishments that are open at that time. So it's just, uh, it's, uh, if you need the, the document number, I got it right here. It is, uh, let's see here, 21-26B uh, 21 uh, number 2. Uh, alcohol beverages between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Sunday through Wednesday, and then 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Thursday through Saturday. So that means Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, there has to be everybody gets gets booted off off the plaza. How much fun they're having, or whatever. But uh, and maybe that it was in there for safety. I, I don't know, or maybe it was just a good time that was decided to between 10 and 2 a.m. At one point, we thought about 10 a.m., and that wasn't obviously wasn't a good good thing to do. So we thought we were leading into this meeting that it was going to be approved for 2 a.m., and it says 1 a.m. So that's it. I just don't want to cause no delay. 
Uh, if it has to come back after another meeting, uh, we'll come back and, and see about going to 2 a.m. after you, we experience it, or we can look at that right now and understand the disruption of clearing the people out the plaza, forcing them inside the businesses. Uh, just seems like it's uh, uh, not, not the way to go, and at the 2 a.m. should be the appropriate time. Tommy, that's a very, very valid concern. I know you and the business owners have been so patient as this mm -hmm. uh, plaza has been built. It is absolutely beautiful. And to the public, if you haven't seen it yet, please go take a, a trip because it's absolutely beautiful what um, what has been able to do. But um, Chris, do you have a, a – okay. So Chris has an answer to your question. Okay. So that time frame – you know, was we had several discussions about that, and with HPD, they they had wanted it earlier. They wanted it to shut down at at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. So what we're proposing is is a compromise, um, so that it's 11 p.m. on the weeknights, let's say, but on the nights where there's generally larger crowds in the bars um, that stay open later, um, 1 a.m. shutdown for the plaza. Now this is alcoholic beverages in the plaza after 1 a.m. So what that means is in talking with HPD, they're saying, well, Chris, those bars and stuff have to be, the registers have to be shut down, closed at 2 a.m. It's not last call at 2 a.m. It's closed at 2 a.m. So in HPD's mind, this gives them the ability. I mean, we all know at 1 a.m., Everybody's not going to clear out. You know, it's going to take people a while to to move out. And the HPD is not going to come in at 1 a.m. donning their riot gear and pushing everybody out of the plaza. It's just not how it goes. But they felt that, you know, if we set a time of 1 a.m., that at least gives them the ability to kind of start to monitor. They're going to have to uh, we're going to be have to work with them about a detail at that time or a unit at that time but they can watch that area closely. And if people start getting out of hand or become ornery or whatever at that late hour, it at least gives them the ability to take them out peacefully and quietly, but at least it says, okay, 1 a.m. Now, you know, they might choose to give people a grace period, but that's where that came from. So just for clarity, Chris, they can stay on the plaza until 2 a.m., but they cannot be served alcohol past 1 a.m. on the plaza. So the the way the plaza works is unless you're in the patio area and each of the plaza merchants has a designated patio area, unless you're in that designated patio area, you have to go inside the establishment to purchase your beverage. So if you want to go get a beer at Mahoney's, you have to go inside and drink it in the plaza. You have to go inside Mahoney's, get it, and we have to, we're giving everybody to-go cups that have the plaza logo on them and stuff. And people can go sit in that plaza because you can't have glass containers, so you have plastic. Um, so after 1 a.m., you can go inside Mahoney's or any of those other establishments and, and, and have a drink in there. It's just you can't have the alcoholic beverage in the plaza af unless – um, after that 1 a.m. time. But if you want to sit and drink a Coke on the plaza. Good. Okay. All or right. water. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. So, I know, do have a, a couple lights, but yeah, no, that, that clarifies it for me. Yes, sir. Well, I just wanted to, and Jules can, can to answer Tommy's question about, you know, changes. I mean, this is a new thing for everybody. This is a new um, venue, a new type of park. So these, these ordinances, you know, they're not perfect. So sometimes you got to come in and revise them later on after you give it some time to see how how it works. Um, so we we're certainly open to change changing these or revising these or updating these as necessary. But as far as tonight goes, I think if we make a substantive change to it, then that would require it to be re advertised, re noticed, and all that stuff. Okay. No, then of course I withdraw my request i mean that's not the idea is to keep working together so uh, that's fine i mean uh uh we'll we'll take it to the next level and as it as as it needs uh, viewing it and understanding how it's going to work and seeing it firsthand we'll know uh but we definitely don't want no delay and you know everybody knows that wednesday the 18th is the opening date uh with the rotary club centennial plaza uh um, lots of uh, complimentary food and and uh, celebration 
dignitaries from all over in town and from Rotary all over the country uh, will be here uh, in a dedication from 530 with two bands and really a nice celebration opening up the, the plaza. Uh, it's the excitement right now with the photos from homecoming to weddings and it's been tremendous uh, to see what you, what you might not have seen yourself. We have seen it and it is going to be uh, something that's going to be a model for a lot of places to come see how we did this, how and and how it's how it's being run. And we have worked hard together, and we've only got a few things that seem to be in question. Uh, we will work together. All right. I, I have a couple more lights. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hebert. Well, Excuse me. Uh, if the question is about the legal authority, is that the question of the councilman? If not, I'll just wait and answer it last. We'll let the councilman go first, and then I'll answer the question. Mr. Duff. Yeah, I've had discussion with uh with a uh, Ch Chief Terrio. What's that? Yeah, I've had discussion with Chief Terry, and we, you know, you know, artists are put in place, and, and the police have to use their best discretion if there's problems or trouble, and and if we have to tweak it along the way, we're gonna tweak it. I mean, it's 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 something new there, so we're gonna we're gonna move along, and you know, of course, they're gonna work with all the, especially the 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 uh, the, the, the business owners along the way, and uh, to make this a success. And I know you did mention on Wednesday, October the 18th. Uh, we have we have a ribbon cutting over on on a plaza, but it, we did get the driveway done on the uh, parking lot on the back. Tommy Boudreau and them got right on it when I decided to go ahead and do it. And of course, we want to thank Gerald today with the Rotary, who's really been instrumental. But but my administration uh, 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 ha has been right on top of it. And Candace, we want to thank you for keeping the funding. And we had funding issues on it and. Of course, our delegation had brought in the money, and the Rotary had put up the money. But it's, you know, doing the, doing that type of fancy work took time, but it it was successfully done. It's a beautiful plaza, and uh, Chris Pulaski headed it up for for, for my administration. And I want to thank everyone on board. It was a it was it, it's really looking good, and um, we can only uh, look forward to it helping Main Street and the owners of Main Street. But we will work with y'all with the Home Police Department, which is under my administration. Okay, very good. Don't forget about the snow in December. It's good. It's coming. We look forward to everything that, that this is going to bring to downtown. It's a game changer. Um, we all up here should be very, very proud because we mm -hmm. were all part of this. Um, the community was part of this. Um, I love seeing it. I pass it every single day. This morning it was beautiful because it there, the sun was just coming up and the lights were still shining. And um, your tables were out there, and I thought, oh, what a wonderful place to have breakfast yes. and have coffee. Um, so we're excited to see what the future holds for downtown. Mm -hmm. This is just the first step, that with the bandstand being completed. And once again, what a wonderful way to demonstrate when you have a public and private partnership, um, what can we actually get done? Um, so kudos to everybody. Thank you for your patience, Tommy. I know it was difficult on the businesses, um, but you guys, I, I'm look forward to seeing you all thrive. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Public three times. Motion to close. Motion to close by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Second, Second by uh, Mr. John Abadie. Members, vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Second by Mr. John Amity. Members vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion passes. Item B, an <coughs> ordinance to amend the 2023 adopted operating budget and five-year capital outlay budget of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. Whitney Bank, $4,333,074. Sorry. Uh, capital Projects uh, Control Fund, $750,000. American Rescue Plan Demolition Program, $1 million. Homa Police Department, $500. Bayou Country Sports Park, $2 million. Bayou Terrebonne Mitergate, $165,000.
Housing and Human Services, $5,000. Community Development Block Grant, $275,000. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to close by Mr. Danny Babin and a second by Mr. Brian Pledger. Members vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion to adopt by Mr. Danny Babin, a second by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Danny Babin, do you have a um, Yeah, question? I have a uh, All right. Yeah. Don't turn I, I'm not turning you off. You can, yeah. Okay, it's on. All right. Uh, you know, I, I just want to go back to, and, and again, uh, there's just a few questions that, it's not really questions, I just want statements out there so we can have it in public. Back in June, on June 16th, uh, we passed an ordinance. Actually, I made the motion and Steve Tro's class seconded. Plus, it was unanimous by this council to, to move forward with the purchase of the Whitney Bank. And that has not changed in my mind, okay? The, the only thing I, I would like for us to get out is because we are making a budget amendment. In the original thing, it talked about, and I can read it, whereas Terrible Parish Consolidated Government further has an opportunity to obtain HUD grant funds through current recovery programs administered by the Louisiana Office of Community Development, OCD, and Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government wishes to use the OTC, OCD grant to fund its purchase of the Hancock Whitney Building and its <clears> adjacent <throat> parking lot. Can you just l let the public know, Candace or Mr. Dove, uh, why we've we've gone from that to a budget amendment? Yes, sir. Um, so when we initially brought it to the council, we anticipated receiving the CEA with the state within 30 to 60 days. We actually just received the CEA with the state. And because of that, the timing wise, um, we started to get concerned that we were going to lose out on the Whitney building um, and the agreement that we had put in place with them. We had certain deadlines that we had to meet and we were afraid we were not going to meet those with the state not moving as fast as we thought with the CDBG money. Um, so we took some time and we went through projects that we had funding in there for that hadn't started or that had finished, um, or, and specifically ones that we could apply for a CDBG money when we got it and replace it with that once this got taken care of. So it really was a timing concern that we weren't going to be able to do it. And we also knew that the CDBG money was coming and that a lot of these projects we would be able to use that funding for. Okay. Just for the general public, I mean, when that money comes in, we cannot replace what we're doing in the budget adjustment, Correct. but it will go towards other projects that we need to do through our budget. Yes, sir. So we have to go through the state. So once we have the CEA, we have to actually apply to it. So even though we have the money and even though we have the agreement, we still have to tell them, hey, this is how we want to spend this money. Right. And we have to put in an application. So then it also takes time for them to approve the application. We have to be very careful about not doing any pre-award expenditures because they will not reimburse us for that. So we cannot come back to them and say, hey, we went ahead and spent the three million. Can you pay us back? Right. And another thing, too, is the CDBG money was only going to allow us to purchase the building. We could not do any renovations or build outs or anything like that with that money. So we've had to come up with more money anyway. So that's why the budget amendment is for 4.3 million. The 3 million is the purchase of the building. The 1.3 will allow us to make any repairs that need to be made as well as any build outs that need to be done for office space. Okay, good. And, and good point when you say office space. What this is going to do, and, and I, listen, I know these answers because we talked about them, but I want the people in the, in the listening in here to, to understand the whole purpose of this is to try and consolidate a lot of our departments in one building. Yes, All right. sir. Where we're paying outside rent right now, we may be paying, it, it may be a department, but at least we're paying ourselves, Correct. Uh, so to speak. All right. So th this is all part of consolidation and, and some of the ancillary things are it helps downtown. All right. I, I mean, that may not be the original purpose of it, but it will help downtown by, by creating more traffic. Okay. The only the only other question, and you answered that the, the, I was going to ask you the purchase price. Purchase price is three million. The the build out brings it to four point four. Only I, and I read that you sent us the ninety five pages mm -hmm. yesterday, and I read some of the uh, inspection report, and there was about uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of one hundred and sixty or so thousand dollars in there uh, on the inspection report. That is 
that is part of the 1.4 that yes, we sir. have to pay for, not not the seller. We are going to, we in our agreement, we agreed to pay those particular yes, things. Okay. And uh, I, I think that, I mean, they, they talked about in the inspection about some things that may have to be changed down the line. Anything you buy may have some changes down the line. I, I actually spoke to Mr. Amade about this today because he's much more aware about these things than, than us because of the work that he does. He said it's just commonplace mm -hmm. that uh, hospitals, other governmental agencies, if they had 10 air handlers, they might change three this year, three the next year, so on down the line. As far as the purchase price, this is, it, it's good. We, we know now where the funding is coming from. And like I said, we voted unanimously back in June to do this, and there's no reason why it would change right now. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bavin. Mr. Almady. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, bring out for the public's interest when they think about that, this building that we're sitting in right here, back in, when we bought this in 2000? Yeah, we bought this in 2000 at $70 and some change per square foot. That building, we're paying $30 and some change per square foot. So now you see why we were so interested in grabbing that building and saving ourselves some lease money. So I applaud the administration on making that deal happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Almady. Mr. Guidry. Um, first of all, thank you so much for providing the information and the backup. You know, uh, I feel at least a lot more educated in the, the value of the building. You know, and it's, it, it definitely seems to be, you know, a good price. Now, it also includes a lease. Whitney Bank is going to continue to stay in the building. Is What is the term of that uh, lease that Whitney is going to have? Do you know? I, I believe the total term of lease was 10 years. It was three years and three-year renewals or something. I do believe they had... Um, said that they would keep the footprint in place for at least 10 years. So there is revenue coming in, and according to the information that you gave to me, the current three-year average expenses on the building uh, would be a break-even counting the rent that it is generating if yes, things sir. stayed the same. Now, naturally, expenses go up a little bit because we have more people occupying it, but, you know, we're also going to be eliminating some rent uh, down the line. So, you know, I think this is, you know, uh, is it a need to have? Well, I don't know. It's, a, it's definitely a nice to have, and, and I think the, the price is, is a, at a good price. So, you know, um, based on the information that you sent to me, that I'll go ahead and support this. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Trostler. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And I just want to expand a little a little more on some of the uh, things that Danny and, and Darren both brought up. You know, uh, one of the main purposes according to the parish president and administration is to consolidate all our departments into a general facility. What what they didn't say was the actual numbers. We are spending right now right at six hundred and fifty thousand a year in outside rental fees to other buildings to house these other departments and storage areas that we got. Which according to Candace, when I spoke to Candace about it, that would totally eliminate that. So that's a $650,000 a year of savings that the parish is going to get by, by purchasing this building. So I think it's a, it's a needed thing, not a, a wanted thing. It's something we definitely need to do, uh, you know, in a matter of roughly six years <clears throat> at 650000 a year, you know, we have a free and clear building that if we keep the tenants that are in there, and I think there's several other tenants besides the Whitney Bank, and I think the number on that's around 300000 a year on, on income, which should cover the majority, if not all, of the maintenance fees to operate that building. So, you know, CDBG money, technically none of it's coming out from basically our t local tax general fund dollars so it's a free and clear building in six years. It's really free and clear. So, you know, it's a no-brainer to me. And, and you know, I'm glad that I can be able to support this. And I think we definitely need to go forward with it. Thanks. Yeah, just and Mr. Babin. Yeah, and, and you're right, Steve. And I just wanted to add one more thing. You know, the 
people in the community, you know, we'll, we'll call it Facebook, but for lack of a better word, have been talking about what we're paying for, and I'll mention the Shamrock Building and the other building where Chris and them are in right now. People have to remember, we were paying rent prior to the hurricane somewhere else. Those buildings were available to us in the storm, after the storm, and that has gotten this government to be able to continue to function. So this is not about taking people out of those two particular places. This is talking about consolidating from where we were before the storm into one building. So it, it's, uh, it's not just since the storm. So thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Bavin. Mr. Dove. Yeah, and I believe everyone pretty well brought up everything that needs to be brought up on this. The one other caveat is, is I've been talking to Chancellor Strickland with uh, Fletcher, and she, they have every they have every intention of, of moving a business incubator and, and a business college downtown to downtown home. I imagine we'll have a university of business incubator and lecture office spaces with a university downtown home to help revitalize downtown Homer, which I think is great. And also, I just want to bring out everything we discussed is here. Y'all, before y'all leave or something, please take it. This explains everything, which I think everyone over here has explained uh, pretty, pretty, pretty vigor vigorously. And uh, I want to thank Candace and Michelle Neal, who who did all the legal the legal work in the. And, and a lot of the agreements with him and uh, Candace uh, for being able to put this together so we didn't lose the sale. Thank you, Candace, and your group. Thank you, Mr. Dove. Mr. Amity. You know, we're talking about the building, but there's some other items in here, and I just want to thank Mr. Dove administration, uh, whoever found the million dollars to put towards our blighted properties in this parish so we can clean up. Um, you know, we've got, uh, are we still over 300? Yeah, so we still have a lot to go, and this really helps. So, you know, a lot of the, Mr. Babman was talking about Facebook, a lot of the complaints on Facebook about, you know, the the trashy appearance of the parish, this will go a long way in, uh, in helping to clean up the parish. So I'll give you guys some more kudos on that. So I guess we're ready for a vote. Not quite yet, Ms. Candace. I just want to make sure that the public realizes that that million dollars is some American Rescue Plan money. So we're not taking that one right. from anywhere either. That is money that we had that hadn't been allocated, and we will be able to start a lot of those demos. So those 44 that we listed on Monday, hopefully that starts to get really short. Thank you for that clarity, uh, Ms. Candace, and I also uh, fully support the purchase of this building. We just talked about the beautiful plaza and all of the great business opportunities that we're starting to see uh, in downtown, and just having more foot traffic in the downtown area helps everyone. Um, so we are ready for our votes. We have a motion and a second. Members, vote your machines. Eight yeas. Motion passes. Item C, an ordinance to authorize the parish president to use funds already in TPCG possession to pur purchase Terrebonne Parish parcel number 20809 and 20812, situated at 7910 Main Street, Homa, Louisiana, 70360, plus the parking lot situating at the corner, corner of Roussel and Boulanger Street, currently owned by Hancock Whitney Bank. Public wants... Public twice, third time public. Close, Motion to close by Mr. Dirk Gidry, second by Mr. Danny Babin. Members, vote your machines. We have eight yeas. We have a, a, a light, though, first, uh, Mr. Dove. Oh, no, y'all can go ahead and finish voting. I just want to make a comment after. Okay, all right. So we have a motion to adopt by Mr. Dirk Gidry, and a second by Mr. Uh, Danny Babin. And before we do that, can I ask one question? This parking lot that's that's listed, is this going to be public parking or it's going to be parking just for the employees of the building? Both. Both. Okay. All right. Thank you for that clarity. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Members, vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Mr. Duff? Well, Madam Chairperson, you actually beat me to the punch. We will be getting 169 parking spaces that will be owned by Terrebonne Parish in that area. And, of course, across by Terrebonne, we already own parking there, so it'll be ample. But this does come with 169 parking spaces, and that's why this was done. 
to clean up a separate lot that goes with this deal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Item D, an ordinance in accordance with Chapter 2, Article 10, Section 2-229 of the Terrebonne Parish Code of Ordinances to authorize the appointment of Anthony J. Alford Insurance Corporation to serve as agent of record for the employee group health insurance, self-funded, and reinsurance contract for medical, dental, and pharmacy benefits commencing on January 1st, 2024 and effective through December 31st, 2024, with the option to renew for two additional one-year terms and more fully described herein. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to, Motion to close by Mr. Dirk Guidry and second by Mr. Brian Pledger. Members vote your machines. Motion to adopt by Mr. Uh, Danny Babin, a second by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Members vote your machines. <clears throat> Motion passes. And Mr. Alfred, would you like to say anything today? I uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Well, Josh, is Josh is here. Yeah, he just stepped out to use the restroom. <laughs> but uh, we really appreciate the business, and I think we've uh, accomplished a lot. I think when we took over, the um, max liability was $23 million for your self-funded plan. And today, seven years later, you're at $17 million. So that's pretty much the opposite of what healthcare has done. So that's the bottom line. Thank you all. Thank you and congratulations. Item E, an ordinance in accordance with Chapter 2, Article 10, Section 2 uh, 229 of the Terrebonne Parish Code of Ordinances to authorize the appointment, appointment of the Lede Corporation, DBA Lede Insurance, to serve as agent producer of record for HOMA Fire Department Comprehensive Fireman's Policy commencing on April 1st, 2024 through March 31st, 2025, and boiler and machinery coverage commencing on March 1st, 2024 four through February 28th, 2025, with the option to renew for two subsequent one-year terms as more fully described herein. Public once, public twice, third time public. <clears throat> Motion to close by Mr. Steve Trosclair and a second by Mr. Danny Babin. Members vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion to adopt by Mr. Danny Babin. Second by Mr. Steve Trosclair. Members vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion passes. And is Mr. Lede here that wants to speak? No? Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Item F, an ordinance in accordance with Chapter 2, Article 10, Section 2-229 uh, of the Terrebonne Parish Code of Ordinances to authorize the appointment of Acrisure LLC registered trade name Larice Insurance Agency to serve as agent producer of record of Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government's casualty insurance coverage commencing on April 1st, 2024 through March 31st, 2025, with option to renew for two additional one-year terms as more fully described herein. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to close by Mr. Darren Guidry and second by Mr. Danny Babin. Members vote your machines. Public is closed. Motion to adopt by Mr. Darren Guidry and a second by Mr. Uh, Danny Babin. Members vote your machines. We have eight yeas. And Mr. Larice, would you like to come up and say anything? Okay, yeah, we can wait till the next one. All right, thank you. Item G, an ordinance in accordance with Chapter 2, Article 10, uh, Section 2-229 of the Terrebonne Parish Code of Ordinances to authorize the appointment of Acrisure LLC registered trade name Larice Insurance Agency to serve as agent producer of record of Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government's property insurance coverage commencing on March 1st, 2024 through February 28th, 2025 with an option to renew for two additional one-year terms as more fully described herein. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to close by Mr. Danny Babin and a second by Mr. Steve Trosclair. Members vote your machines. Public is closed. Motion to adopt by Mr. Steve Trosclair, a second by Mr. Danny Babin. Members vote your machines. 
Eight yays. Mr. Larice, do you want to come up now, please? First of all, I just want to thank the council and the administration for your continued trust in the Reese Insurance Agency. I think we're going on seven years now. We've been administering and brokering the parish's insurance on casualty and approximately six on property. As everybody knows, the property market in South Louisiana and quite frankly across the Gulf Coast has gotten really, really tough to navigate. It continues to be a difficult market, but I can assure you that Larice will continue to work diligently, myself and my team, and we take a lot of pride in what we do. And more importantly, I'm really, really happy with the trust you've placed in us to navigate this difficult market. And I'm always available. Anybody needs to get in touch with me on anything, I'm available. My staff is available 24-7. So, again, thank you very much. It means a lot to me and my staff. And um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, and congratulations, thank sir. Thank you. Item H, the proposed 2024 parish budget and five-year capital outlay budget. Call to continue. Continue the public hearing to the October 25th, 2023 meeting. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to continue. Motion to continue by Mr. John Amity and second by Mr. Carl Harding. Members, vote your machines. Motion to go back in regular order. Motion to go back in regular order by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second. second by Mr. Carl Harding. Members, vote your machines. No. Mm -mm. We have eight yeas. Um, we're back in public uh, in regular order. It's public wishes to address the council, and we've already um, uh, recognized all of today's speaker cards. Item three, committee reports. Community Development and Planning Committee, Mr. John Amity. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion that the council accept and ratify the minutes of the Community Development Planning Committee held on October 9th, 2023, and I have no public hearings. We have a motion by Mr. Amity and a second by Mr. Babin. Members, vote your machines. Eight yeas. Item B, Public Services Committee, Mr. Carl Harding. Thank you. I motion that uh, the council accept and ratify the minutes of the Public Service Committee held on uh, October 9, 2023, and I have one public hearing, and that is an ordinance to amend Turbon Parish Code of Ordinances uh, to establish a four-way stop at the intersection of Chantilly and Parnell uh, to provide for the installation of said signs and provide uh, for other matters relative thereto and call for a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, October 20. 5th, 2023 at 6 30 p.m. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Harding, a second by Mr. Amity. Members vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Motion passes. Item C, Budget and Finance Commission uh, Committee. <laughs> Mr. Dirk Gidry. I'll make Please press your light. I make a motion that the council accept and ratify the minutes of the Budget and Finance Committee held on October 9, 2023, and I have one public hearing. An ordinance to amend the 2023 op adopted operating budget and five-year capital outlay budget of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items that provide for related matters. Dedicated emergency fund, $8,808,788. Dedicated emergency fund, $755,000. Dedicated Emergency Fund, $7,493,772. Sewage, $175,000. Coastal Restoration, $25,000. Public Safety Fund, $3 million. Road Lighting District, 3A, $30,000. Parish Prisoners, $985,000. Road Lighting District Number 6, $5,000. By Terrebonne Modern Gate, $250,000. Hollywood Road Roundabout, $200,000. Terrebonne Basin Watershed, $300,000. Buy a Terrebonne Pump Station Twin Span, $100,000. And call a public hearing on said matter on October 25th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. We have a motion by Mr. Gidry and a second by Mr. Babin. Members, vote your machines. <coughs> we have eight yeas. Motion passes. Item four, street lights. As per, As per by Mr. Yeah. Dirk Gidry and second by Mr. Brian Pledger. Members, vote your machines. 
Eight yeas. Motion passes. Item five, appointments to various boards, committees, and commissions. Item A, Recreation District Number 10, one expired term on October 26, 2023. Mr. Danny Constant Jr. expresses his interest in being reappointed. Mr. Harold Turner, Turner submits application for consideration. Open, close, and vote. We have a motion to open, close, and vote by Mr. Babin. Second by Mr. Harding. Members, vote your machines. I'm sorry. We roll call vote. I do that every time. All right. Can we please get a roll call vote? Mr. Pleasure. Mr. Turner. Mr. Harding. Mr. Michelle. Um, Mr. Amity. Ms. Domain. Constant. Mr. Darren Gidry. Constant. Mr. Babin. Constant. Mr. Dirk Gidry. Constant. And Mr. Trusclair. We have five for uh, Constant and three for Turner. Congratulations to Mr. Constant. Item B, Fire Protection District Number 8, two expired terms. Mr. Patrick Bourgeois expresses his interest in being reappointed. We have a motion to open it, close an appointment to Bourgeois and hold the second um, appointment by Mr. Uh, Darren Gidry and a second by Mr. Carl Harding. Members, vote your machines. We have eight yeas. Congratulations to Mr. Bourgeois. Item C, Coastal Zone Restoration and Management. Four expiring terms on October 31st, 2023, each representing the following entities. Two representing the public, one representing recreational fishing, and one representing property owners. Mr. Barry Soudier expresses his interest in being reappointed representing recre recreational fishing. Mr. Ernest J. Babin expresses his interest in being reappointed representing the public. Open, close, and appoint and hold the other two over. We have a motion. Uh, second. We have a motion to open, close, and appoint by Mr. Babin and a second by Mr. Gidry. Members, vote your machines. And by the way, Mr. Soudier and Mr. Babin. We have eight yeas. Congratulations to Mr. Studio, Mr. Babin. Item D, Planning and Zoning Commission. One vacancy due to resignation. Applicant must reside in the city of Homa. Mr. Clarence McGuire Jr. submits application for consideration. Mr. Michael J. Billiot submits application and resume for consideration. Open, close, we have a motion to open, close, and vote by Mr. Pledger and a second by Mr. Babin. Can we please get a roll call vote? Mr. Pleasure. Mr. McGuire. Mr. Harding. McGuire. Mr. Michelle. Mr. Amity. McGuire. Ms. Domain. McGuire. Mr. Darren Gidry. Mr. De uh, Babin. McGuire. Mr. Dirk Gidry. McGuire. Mr. Trusclair. We have seven for McGuire and one for Billia. Congratulations to Mr. McGuire. Are you here today? You would you like to come say a few words, sir? Yes. yes. <laughs> Please state your name and address for the record, sir. Right. Clarence McGuire, uh, 120 Tiger Lily Drive, home of Louisiana. And I do appreciate your uh, vote for this position, and hopefully I'll be able to uphold it to the uh, best of my ability. Thank you all very much. Congratulations, right. sir. Item six, vacancies to various boards, committees, and commissions. Recreation District number 23 board, one vacancy due to resignation. Recreation District number 3A board, one expired term on November 14th, 2023, and two vacancies. Recreation District number seven, one expired term on November 14th, 2023. Children and Youth Services board, one expiring term on November 1st, 2023, representing the Office of District Public Defender, 32nd Judicial District, and 11 expired terms, each representing one of the following. Social Services, Education, Terrebonne Parish District Attorney, Department of Children and Family Services, Bayou Area Children's Foundation, City Court, Terrebonne Recreation Department, Gulf Coast Teaching and Family Services, Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office, Home of Police Department, and Terrebonne Parish School Board. Tito, one expired term representing the parish president. Terrebonne Parish Tree Board, three vacancies due to resignations. Planning and Zoning Commission, 
one expired term on November 30th, 2023. Applicant must rely. I'm sorry, this was already filled tonight. It was not. It's another one. Okay. All right. So planning and zoning commission, one expired term on November 30th, 2023. Applicant must reside in the city of Homa. Coastal zone management and restoration, two expired terms on October 31st, 2023, each representing the following entities. One representing the public and one representing property owner and one expired term representing commercial fishing. Homa Area Convention and Visitors Bureau, one expired term on November 31st, I'm sorry, December 31st, 2023, representing a civic nonprofit organization. Downtown Development Corporation, five expired terms on November 1st, 2023, each representing the following entities. Two representing the parish council, one representing the parish president, one representing the historical society, and one representing the garden clubs. Municipal Civil Services Board, one expired term on November 29th, 2023, representing the council. Veterans Memorial Board, one expired term on September 17th, 2023, representing the parish president, North and Intercoastal. Item seven, monthly, engin uh, monthly engineering reports, as per by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second by Mr. Steve Trosclair. Members, vote your machines. We have seven yeas. Motion passes. Item eight, announcements. Mr. Toops, do we have any parish president announcements? Mr. Pulaski would like to make an announcement. Yeah, I just wanted to let you all know and the public as well, on September 28th and on October 3rd, we held some public meetings to get input um, from the public and ideas and comments regarding proposed projects or project ideas for our community development block grant disaster recovery money. Um, this is roughly about $40 million and we anticipate another allocation in the future. The recordings of those meetings is available on our website at tpcg.org slash recovery. There's also an online survey that people can go and fill out and make comments, um, provide ideas, whatever it is. Again, this we we just showed a list of potential projects or projects idea project ideas, but it is by no means the final list. And uh, any new meetings or additional meetings that we schedule will also be posted on that same website. So that's yeah. tpcg.org/recovery. Uh, yes, Mr. Dark Gidry has Chris, one. Who, ma who makes the final decision about who gets the, what projects they accepted? Is it Candace? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. No, that. <laughs> no, it will um, eventually have to go to the council for a budget amendment to recognize the funding. So we would not do that until we had the approval from the state application. Um, so as far as what we put in for the state application, that would be administration and the input from council members that way. Um, we will put an application in for more than what we are allocated. So that way, if one doesn't get approved, it'll just kind of go down to the next. So it'd be the parish president and the council that yes, would sir. approve these? Yes, sir. So the list of projects is due back to the state on December 26th. And so we have to have that list published for public viewing about a week prior to that, I believe. December 26th. Actually, January 8th. January 8th? Yeah. And are there going to be any more public hearings anywhere <laughs> else, or is it done with public hearings? Well, I'm looking at possibly trying to schedule two more meetings in between now and, and the end, but the survey is available online anytime. Yeah, because I, I'd, I'd really like people to go out and give their give their two cents in, because yeah. we had a meeting down in Chauvet. We had six people, you know what yeah. I mean? And we're talking about $40 million worth of projects going into Terrebonne Parish. So we need to get a lot of input from people I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah, we're looking so, at doing some more meetings, possibly another one here in town. I'm looking at maybe one up in the northern areas of the parish, too. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that survey will be available online. And this, this, it's not to say this is a whole new set of projects, because if you recall last year, too, we did a round of meetings. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the projects and ideas that are already populated on that list were coming out of those seven public meetings that we had last fall. It's just that those projects, some of them weren't eligible for funding that we've had to date, but it is eligible for this kind of funding. Some of it's available for both types. So we have, you'll see some projects show up on probably three different lists. Oh. Um, 
Okay, just so the ones that I want to get put up. Uh, right. right. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Mr. Uh, Babin. Yeah, uh, you know, along with what Dirk is saying, you know, six people showed up and showed up. This is $40 million that, that is out there for us to use. People, people have to quit complaining and get involved, okay? And, and along with that, this Saturday is a statewide election, all right? We have the right to vote. Go exercise that privilege that you have to get out there and go vote. Doesn't matter who you vote for. Make sure you're aware of the candidates, but also make sure you're aware of the amendments that we have on there. And there's some millage deals in the parish. So the key is I'm not asking you to vote for any particular thing. I'm asking you to go out and vote. It's what we need to do in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Babin. Mr. Pledger. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, Chris, I noticed that you said, we, we, well, we did have the two, uh, two meetings um, here about the, about the funds that are coming in, but you also mentioned that you kind of shared with the folks some projects that are already, you know, some examples of some projects that we, uh, we want to get done. Um, or when all these projects are decided, are we going to have a scoring system, a prioritization, or how are we going to prioritize what's most important, kind of, you know, lay it all out, or it's just going to be we'll pick this and that one, or... How's that going to work? Yeah, um, I mean, the, the, right now the projects, I mean, some of them, um, it, it'll be a question of which ones, it's kind of a combination of all. I mean, which ones would score or have the best chance of being approved? I mean, although this money has been allocated, it still is up to FEMA to determine ultimately whether or not a project is um, eligible. So we might prioritize some on this pot of money, but it may be on a lower priority on another pot of money. If we think, well, we stand a better chance of getting approved in CDBG DR, then we'll, we'll prioritize it for that set of funding and maybe not so much in hazard mitigation or something like that. Thank you. Council members, any announcements? I had oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Harding had a question. So in essence, we're saying we're getting forty million dollars, okay, and these uh, projects that we have, technically, these projects have to be approved by where we're making the application for. So, it may be out to the public to understand that these projects that we are going after, but it really has to be on the approval, and we can actually go on according to what they approve us to do. Correct. And, and I'm sorry, Chris, can you turn your mic back on? So the presentations that were made um, and the videos of those presentations is available on that link. Um, part of the presentation includes a description of the program itself and the types of projects that are eligible or not eligible in that program. It's not eligible for individual assistance. So for those folks who need assistance to elevate or repair their homes, CDBG DR money will not cover that. Yeah, and, and that's my point, because when we were traveling around in, in yeah. the recent years, that everywhere that we went, that particular area said we are the forgotten people. So when these projects are actually done, we're going to do the best that we could for what we are, what is dictated for us to do. You know what I mean? So if it, if it doesn't come to you, then you got to understand, uh, just like these veterans out here, Everyone is, uh, is a part of Terrebonne Parish. And I think we as an administration and then with the, the, the work that they're doing, you have to trust us. You know, I, I don't think I want to slight not one person in Terrebonne Parish. And so, therefore, you know, man, we're going to do the best we could where this money can be distributed in Terrebonne Parish and, and what's best suited for all, not one particular area. So I thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Ms. Malden, do you have a yes, comment on that one? Yes, ma'am. I just want to elaborate a little bit, too. There is a lot of funding that is available out there. We have the disaster recovery money coming. That's what we're doing these public meetings for and all of that. But Chris and I have met several times with our consultants and anybody else we can talk to. There's the uh, infrastructure money bill, the IRA <laughs> bill. So every time we get input from the public, it may not fit into the home revitalization or the infrastructure, but we then put it into a master list that we have and we compare to see where other funding is available. So just because it's not hitting, like you said, Mr. Harding, just because it doesn't fit into this one pot, we're still going to try to get it in another pot that we can have some. 
and and also it's worth mentioning too that the elig eligibility requirements do have compo built-in components to them that these are this money is intended to serve um, low to moderate income communities who are the most vulnerable. So they have limitations about you know where that money can be spent. So we have to provide mm -hmm. when we submit the applications, we have to show how this particular project or, or suite of projects benefits these community types and the proximity to them. Thank you so much. Council members, um, announcements. Mr. Harding, did you have an announcement? Okay. Do we have any announcements? No? Well, I do have one announcement. Uh, we do have uh, an election, as uh, Mr. Babin said, and um, all of us um, are will be on the ballot, and so I just want to wish my fellow councilmen um, good luck, except for two of them. Well, we know the two, the two lucky ducks over here. Um, but I would like to wish all my fellow colleagues um, good luck this Saturday. Um, and I hope everybody goes to vote. We have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Dirk Gidry, a second by Mr. Babin. Members, vote your machines. We are adjourned. Good night.